The replenishment of soil nutrients used by grass plants is most commonly carried out using a broadcaster which throws granular fertilizer out at a set application rate. There is a variety of broadcasting distributors available for granular fertilizer, but they can be broadly categorized as pedestrian spinning disc distributors, tractor mounted spinning disc distributors, and tractor mounted oscillating spout distributors. Pedestrian spinning disc distributors comprise a hopper to carry the fertilizer, an agitator at the base of the hopper to keep the fertilizer flowing, a metering device to adjust the rate for flow of fertilizer, and a single horizontal spinning disc for distributing the fertilizer. The disc is driven by the wheels and so a steady walking pace is needed to help apply the fertilizer as uniformly as possible. The application rate achieved can be affected by a number of factors including forward speed and therefore disc speed, bout width and overlap, wind and the size and weight of the fertilizer prills. It is therefore strongly recommended that you calibrate your distributor to achieve the desired application rate in grams per square meter. To do this, you should follow the manufacturer's handbook, but if this information is not available, you can do it with the following equipment. The fertilizer distributor, the fertilizer that you intend to apply, catch trays, weighing scales, a tape measure, a large clean area and a sweeping brush. Set the meter to where you think it needs to be for the product you are applying and fill the hopper with fertilizer. Set out a line of catch trays in front of the distributor along the direction of travel but omit trays directly in line with the wheels. Operate the distributor at the walking speed you intend to carry out the operation and make sure you continue travelling forwards until no fertiliser is reaching the catch trays either side of you. This is important as fertiliser is thrown both forwards and sideways. Repeat this a number of times so that you can collect sufficient fertiliser in the trays to make weighing easier, but note how many passes you make through the trays. Measure the position of each tray, then weigh. Note down the amount of fertilizer received in the individual trays, but divide this weight by the number of passes made to calculate the weight of fertilizer received in each tray for one pass. The next step is to convert this into grams per square meter. To do this, you need to divide the amount of fertilizer received in each tray by the area of the tray. If the top of the tray measures 20 centimeters by 30 centimeters, the area of the tray in square meters is 0.2 times 0.3, which equals 0.06 square meters. Now convert this into grams per square meter by dividing the weight for one pass by the area of the tray, which equals 50 grams per square meter for that particular tray. Treat each tray in the same way and note your answers down. Now plot a simple graph of the distance of each of the trays, both sides from the center of the distributor, versus the application rate received in each tray. The graph that you have plotted will often be approximately triangular in shape, indicating that the application rate diminishes with the distance away from the distributor. As we need to achieve a uniform application rate, it is important to determine the optimal overlap bout width. The easiest way to do this is to trace the shape of your graph onto tracing paper. Place the trace exactly over the original graph and then start to slide the traced shape sideways until it intersects halfway down the triangular slope of the original graph. The distance between the center of the original and the traced graphs is the optimal bout width. Adopting an optimal bout width is important as it avoids alternate strips of under and over fertilized turf which become very obvious once the grass plants take up the fertilizer. The final step is to calculate the total application rate that you will achieve when using the optimal bout width. To do this, simply add up the total from the two overlapping lines on the graphs. If the total application rate achieved is not close to your target rate, you will need to adjust the metering mechanism accordingly and repeat the calibration process.